All right, let's kick out to some weather here on this Tuesday evening. It's the 27th day of October, and it's been another cloudy day today, and we've had some light rain and drizzle that has emerged during the latter half of the afternoon. Let's start out to this evening with our time lapse from Youngstown showing the overcast conditions today. It's kind of interesting to see the different uh, directions these clouds have been blowing today, and uh, some light rain and some drizzle has found its way into the valley, making for a dismal-looking rush hour this evening. We're heading into our cloudy time of the year, of course, very end of October, and then especially into November, December, January, and February. That's our cloudy season. We're, we're exiting the sunniest time of the year, generally from May through the first half, roughly, of October. All right, we're going to see some sunshine tomorrow, but uh, tonight's going to be dead overcast, and as a result, a little rain, a little drizzle will still be around. This is the radar as of 624 this evening. This is nothing all that heavy, and uh, this disturbance will continue to pivot through over the next handful of hours. At least we're not dealing with anything of the frozen variety. I showed you this last evening, and they're still dealing with an ice storm in parts of Oklahoma. I've seen some pretty dramatic pictures and video from parts of Oklahoma showing the damage that this ice storm has caused, a very early season ice event. And then, not that far away from this, we have tropical weather to talk about. Notice all the ice storm warnings and winter storm warnings, and then you go down to the tropics and we have a tropical storm. Only in October could you see something like this, an uh, ice storm and a tropical storm kind of uh, on the playing field all at the same time. Uh, this is Zeta, which was a hurricane for a time yesterday. Now it's kind of a high-end tropical storm moving to the northwest at 14. Expected to make landfall tomorrow, uh, second half of the day, somewhere between central Louisiana and the panhandle of Florida. Whether it's a high-end tropical storm or a low-end hurricane doesn't really matter. The impacts will be the same. Um, There'll be uh, some rain and some wind, certainly, but nothing devastating, and its forward speed will certainly do those folks some favors. Back here at home, high-res feature cast tonight, light rain and drizzle, probably through at least 2 or 3 in the morning. Now, by the time most people are getting up tomorrow morning and heading off to work and school, I think the, the drizzle is trying to get out of here, and we should see some sun, or at least some intervals of sun, during the second half of the day. Now, this doesn't look as sunny as it did yesterday. Tomorrow is trending cloudier, in other words. But the farther north you are in our area, the brighter it should be in the afternoon. The farther south you are, it's still going to be kind of overcast, I think, for a part of the day. So down towards uh, East Liverpool and then certainly down towards Wheeling and Steubenville and Pittsburgh, it'll end up just being another mostly cloudy afternoon. The rain is likely to return then by about daybreak or so on Thursday. Now, what we have going on is a combination of the remnants of Zeta kind of merging with an upper level system that's moving through the southern plains right now. It's what's responsible for the frozen precipitation out in the middle of the country. Those two things are going to kind of combine and just bring a slug of moisture north, and it's just going to rain Thursday into at least parts of Thursday night, and then showers will wind down Friday morning. Now, this will be a healthy dose of rain for the lower Ohio River Valley. Not going to be surprised if we have a lot of flood watches issued for southwest Ohio, southern Indiana, southern Illinois, right along the Ohio River, and then towards the mid-Atlantic states as well. Roanoke, Richmond, up towards D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia. Even as far north as Pittsburgh, there could be a couple of inches worth of rain out of this. For us, the models are starting to coalesce a little bit around the idea that, at least in the northern part of our viewing area, this Thursday and Thursday night rain will add up to about an inch on average. Now, I think the farther south you are in our television viewing area, uh, you have increased odds of the higher amounts coming to fruition. So Lisbon on south, maybe inch and a half, inch and three quarters. I think that could be attainable. And again, maybe even up to two inches as you get closer to the Pittsburgh area. We will not have accumulating snow around here. But as I showed you last evening, accumulating snow is looking pretty likely near the Pennsylvania-New York border and uh, parts of the Finger Lakes and then heading over towards Binghamton and Elmira and into parts of the Catskill Mountains and into parts of New England, uh, enough to be impactful. Now, a lot of this will be on the non-paved surfaces, but still you know, pretty early in the season to see that much snow in those fairly far south latitudes. Halloween forecast coming up on Saturday. Of course, this uh, Halloween will look a little different. Uh, in most communities, trick-or-treat is actually on Halloween this year, since it is on a Saturday. But of course, with social distancing concerns and things like that, uh, it'll be a little different. But uh, if you are taking the kids out to do some trick-or-treating, Saturday uh, late afternoon into the evening. No need for the wet weather gear. It'll be dry, but it will be chilly. Upper 40s at 3 p.m. and tailing back into the low 40s 
later on in the evening. And just another reminder that uh, Daylight Saving Time ends this weekend, so we return to Standard Time at 2 a.m. Sunday morning, it's a good uh, opportunity to do your twice-a-year check of the batteries in your smoke detector, carbon monoxide detectors as well. We're going to miss out on the accumulating snow for sure with our late-week system, but I do think that the first snowflakes of the season may head our way by Sunday night and Monday. A cold front will bring some showers on Sunday. It'll turn blustery, and temperatures may fall Sunday afternoon. And then some pretty good instability over the Great Lakes and enough cold air Sunday night into Monday morning that some snowflakes will probably fly in parts of northeast Ohio, northwest PA. And up in the primary snow belt, could someone even see some accumulation? Uh, it's going to be possible up towards like Chardon and places like that, the, the real heart of the snow belt. Uh, down in our area, I really doubt we have any accumulation around here, but the, the season's first flakes, yeah, I think it's pretty likely to be seen Sunday night into Monday morning. Now, beyond that, beyond the first half of next week, second half of next week and beyond, I think the nation's going to be flooded with mild Pacific air. And this may be the case for a lot of the first half of November. First couple of days of November look pretty chilly. But beyond that, uh, a, a milder regime looks to set in across much of the country, coming to a relief of those who have not enjoyed the late October chill. All right, coming up, hopefully next Thursday, a couple of days after Election Day, we're going to do the annual winter forecast. And as promised, I'm going to be talking about a few aspects of the winter forecast in the lead up to the official forecast issuance. Um, wanted to start out this evening with just a quick look at the grades for last year's winter forecast. I sat here in this chair in front of this microphone about one year ago and told you that it would likely be a wetter than average winter. That ended up being right. The rest of the forecast was not so good. I uh, did expect an above average year for snowfall and temperatures to be near the average. Those two items were a colossal fail, although my forecast was quite a bit more conservative than many that I saw. I saw a lot of really cold winter forecasts issued um, by a lot of it, different entities, both television and private sector meteorologists. A lot of cold forecasts for last winter. My forecast was uh, quite a bit more conservative, especially in the temperature department. Either way, though, it wasn't a good forecast. Um, the reasons for that are fairly complicated, and, and a lot of it, I think, has to do with what some of the stuff that went on in the Indian Ocean, of all places, last winter, having a chain reaction upstream in the, uh, or downstream, I should say, in the Pacific and then into North America. It's some pretty complicated meteorology, but I think that was kind of the culprit for last year. We're going to do better this year. We have a stronger signal in the Pacific as far as the uh, La Nina is concerned. We have a pretty strong La Nina, and the stronger the El Nino or the La Nina is, that tends to lead to higher confidence winter forecasts. So I, uh, I will admit that I have a higher confidence in our winter forecast this year than I did last year. It's not as high, the forecast confidence is not as high as I would like necessarily, but it is higher. And I'm going to talk about all that goes into this winter forecast and the forecast itself, of course, in much more detail coming up in the next week or so. In the meantime, thanks for watching tonight. I'll see you back here on Wednesday for weather for Weather Geeks.